They don't want niggas on the screen talking about I'll shoot you and this and that. The guys are actually coming from the streets with violent content and they're trying to do something good. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. I'm still out here trying to eat a meal. I spent whole nights lurking in the field. Bust them other niggas, then our shit feels. Push, push, I feed it for the wheels. Three litre ding dong, skidding round a hill. Swam me on deck when we lurking for a kill. With something get got, I know my niggas won't swill. Said it won't war, nigga. So I roll around with that fours, nigga. Screaming six of a K. I'm a smoke for us to a four, nigga. M rolled up and then he's buzzing. Screaming now, if he's up, then we run him. We in our B, we don't know about running. I said, my niggas that be home in a set. Man, want niggas in the hood, off the street and winning. You know what I mean? So let's win. It's simple. Stop fucking about. Life calling my gun. Fuck, could the sits get burned? No point trying to run. M got the Mac and it sounded like a drum. I've always been fascinated by music from the streets of the UK, from rave to drum and bass, to garage to grime to dubstep. The way this island creates scenes out of nothing. No music school, no funding, no facilities. If you wanted something, you had to do it yourself. Pure self-belief. I was lucky enough to work with some great grime MCs when the movement started. And then a few years later, gigs seemed to come out of nowhere, spitting the hardest bars and most uncompromising stories from the streets. Giggs was the first real UK gangster rapper as far as I'm concerned. We did a tune together called Slow Songs back in 2009. Listening to gigs eventually led me to Corleone and a few others. At the time, we called it Road Rap. It was very underground, and I figured it always would be. I mean, the lyrics and imagery weren't exactly family friendly. But then a new version of hard London rap started to pop off on places like GRM Daily and Link Up TV, just when grime started to have its resurgence in about 2015. Maybe the sound of the music is too hard or the lyrics are too violent, but mainstream media weren't really paying attention, certainly not in the same way as grime. I kind of became fascinated by it. It was one of those undeniable things where the numbers proved that so many kids were so passionate about this music, regardless of mainstream media exposure. But could it really explode in the way grime has, given not just the lyrics and imagery, but some of the pasts of the rappers involved? And it seems some were still battling to leave the roads behind. Six Seven, the Brixton Hill drillers are blowing up in a big way, but their rise hasn't been without controversy. I went to their area to meet the men behind the headlines, in particular, the man behind the mask. Wanna take it there, we can take it there. You want, I Skang in a four door truck, up block, take it there. Bow, I Bro's got both and O, you know it's gonna rake it there. Rake it, I Most of the team in jail, still getting paid in there. Niggas know how we got down days, how you gonna make it fair? How? Same way we got down capo, you can never make it fair. Wanna take it there, we can take it there. When's, when's the next show? Tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow? Where? Damn. <laughs> LD wears a mask at all times to protect his identity. And so they say, he is also standing in for Scribs, who was banned by the police from making music. So, I mean, are we all right filming you without your mask? I guess it would be quite difficult getting a... Yeah, it would be hard to film and get my shape up with the mask on. It was to do with the police, right? You getting a mask. Is that right? Yeah, well, someone else that got in trouble with the police. I just basically started rapping for that someone else. They didn't want me certain places in Lambeth and, and, and Scribs as well. Obviously, they say that he's a danger to the public, which ain't true. So you damn ready now? 
Damn ready, of course. Amsterdam ready. Of course. <laughs> you know me, I love the buds. So how's it happening with the business side? You're independent? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? Is that important? To me, yeah. I'd rather go through the highs and lows with my peoples than do it with other people, with outsiders, you get me? To me, that is really different. When I was young, every rapper wanted to get signed. Everyone's trying to do the independent thing now. And everyone sees that everyone can get views and, and build something off their views and that's so, all. It's kind of easier now. Because you don't get money from YouTube, really, do you? Uh, YouTube's chicken change. The real money is the show. But that, we've got the feds just shutting it down every minute out of nowhere. Yeah. We all finish what, our little probations, whatever. Like everyone's clean and all of that, calm. They said that our shows can go back on. Then we got the Leicester, that was the next big thing. We found out like two days before the show, can't go, yeah. saying we can't even turn up to the venue. So it's all long. What is the one thing about you that people think that isn't true? That I'm a devil. <laughs> <laughs> they think I'm a devil, I'm a flipping good guy. I'm a, yeah. I'm, I'm a family guy. I just do what's right for the family. You get me? Even if I have to do wrong to do right, I'll do wrong to do right. It all makes sense in the end, you get me? Free one shot kill, they can't stop them clocks. G money got guap like Tesco tills and corner shops. Bro put flattered ones in the fours, now man gone score and crash it at ops. Big and that I was kind of familiar with you probably for about a year when Let's Lurk dropped. That's like such a big tune in the clubs now. So yeah, just like talking about the music, obviously it comes from like Chicago drill and... It started from there, like when we used to listen to that. In 2012, 13. Yeah. Obviously, that's the times I was banging, Chief Keith and all that. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, the music kind of died down. I think a lot of them go prison and that. Like, from the outside, you know, you're, you're rapping about, like, selling drugs, shooting guns. Compared to a lot of forms of music, it's aggressive, right? A one, two, five's what I'm whizzing. I couldn't give a fuck about prison. Went jail for some guns, now I'm out. I'm still with it. I never listen, no, cos I'm above the law, that time got ridden. But you have to, like, read between the lines almost, cos, like, being a positive influence in music, it isn't just about rapping soft shit, is it? Cos if you start rapping, like, soft stuff, actually people will just stop paying attention. Like, someone's actually told me that when they're angry, yeah. They put six, seven on and just get all their aggression out, just vibes to the music. After a while, they get tired and just turn it off and they're calm. Yeah. Coming from London, like, it's a hard place. We never woke up and said, yeah, we're starting a gang for destruction or whatnot. We woke up one day and said, you know, we can do this music thing properly. We're hard. Everyone's onto the music. Let's get this foundation properly done and excel. There's bare real G's in the room. There's bands in the room. I was impressed with how switched on Dimsy was. 6-7 might be seen as the most dangerous crew in UK rap, but to me they seem really focused on making a career out of music. 6-7 are one of the UK rap acts that are getting their shows shut down because of fears they will turn violent. Is there proof there is more trouble at these events? A risk assessment that promoters have to fill out so venues can gauge if the gig will be high risk to public safety. The 696 seems to target shows that are MC-led rather than DJs or bands. But why? Is there proof that there is more trouble at these shows? Or is it more about the criminal pasts of some of the performers? So uh, we've been hanging out with 67. They seem to be the sort of current 696 flavour of the month, as far as I can see. What's the strategy? In as it stands, 6-7 is, is high risk. The tour collapsed kind of one by one. So it's like London withdrew first and then Birmingham called a few days later yeah. saying, oh, we've seen London's been taken down. It's a bit of a knock-on effect. Yeah. So what conversations had been had 
behind closed doors in between, you know, regional authorities. I don't know, and we're never told. Yeah. This is the thing. Primarily, live shows is the way a lot of these people are eating. So yeah. it's just like, if you're really serious about making proper money... Yeah, you, know, you, you have to tour. tour. Yeah, you've got to tour, because yeah. you're not going to be selling records. How many of these need to get cans for you realise, actually, we need to think of a way to be more productive collectively to let yeah. these shows happen? Because as I said, each year there's more and more shows coming in, more and more people want to tour and play it. They should be allowed to do that. Six, seven have hit a few stumbling blocks on their journey. But there is proof that guys from the hood rapping the hard shit can reach a huge audience. Section boys from down the road in Thornton Heath are in their own lane. In a short space of time, they've headlined Brixton Academy, played the biggest European festivals and performed at the O2 Arena with Drake, while never compromising their sound. Like many people in the scene, it seems, they're trying to get away from their area. I didn't think they'd be this far out, though. Where the fuck are we? Like, really, where the fuck are we? In the kiss, I got a deep lock. That's a dense lock. I don't ever leave out for a ten shot. Peace now, I don't care if you messed up. Tell the nigga better be round and forget not. Fuck your dead squad and your CV and your CD and your best dog. I just put a hammer down in a pen block. I just put a banger down in a desktop. The kicks on the carpet, man. Really, truly, the shoes should be off with it, but DP and Littles that live here have got their trainers on. Not setting a good example, still. Let's say I was in the section, boys, right? Yeah. And I was, and I wanted to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, firstly, what man does what, like? What's, what would I do? Set a man, pick them up. Yeah. And then from they get in the car. Yeah. Blindfold. <laughs> and music. Yeah. 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 Are you being serious? Yeah. yeah. It's more for our safety. Thank, 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 thank you. Safety. Thank you for not blindfolding me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how long have you had the house? Four months. I would be so chilled if I lived here. Like, see when man's out here, yeah, it's peaceful. Sometimes man's coming in from the roads at like. Three o'clock in the morning, man's pulling up. It's pitch black out there. Obviously, like, not being scared of the dark, I don't want to say it on camera, but do you know what I mean? Obviously, maybe like ghosts and that. Ghosts, but that's about it. He will pull house with some up faces in a naughty house. And I don't like strangers, so don't I'm a big man for this. Are you into like the, the road rap guys like the That's what we are. I didn't think you would call yourself that like we diverse in it with our rap. Yeah. Obviously like it's originally like trap rap, etc. But I don't want to be known as grand rappers, man rappers. Obviously like for a lot of and I'm talking about like road rappers, mm. obviously there's like a transition, isn't there, between um, making money in the streets and obviously not. Do you have to make sure that everyone around you <coughs> isn't doing anything naughty? The well, man them know how to move correct. That's all. On that, on that subject, the man them know how to move correct, innit? Get me? Do you ever, like, worry about getting into arguments with other people that might sort of drag you back? What, the, like, going back to the road stuff? Yeah. Oh, people draw people out, innit? Like, it's just the world, bro. Are people get, trying to get at you like that? No comment. Yeah. Mm, no comment, man. It's a life we live though, innit? Gotta adapt and survive. The guys hit Twitter to announce a super secret last minute show in East London. Tickets sell out in less than an hour. Despite their success, section boys grind like they've just entered the game. Steel and copper. Yeah, we do road act, man. Everything lock off. Huh? Everything lock off. Everything lock off. Everything lock off. We getting lit. Champagne pop up. Still up in the bits. Trying to get well up. Skating team pop and get man run up. Bro with a brocky. All chuck a block up. Plastic you them a bait like top up. Talk to the feds. Got knock man lock off. Free TKT wear and rock off. What? Everything lock off. What? Section, man, them. That music in particular, it lifts people's mood up. You're on the vibes. Do you get what I'm saying? They say, what? Everything like, oh, come on, like. They put a video out, half a mil, million views in a couple days. Jay-Z was a crap dealer, but now he's banging Beyonce, and his kids have got trust funds that are like in the 300 million. It's inspirational to someone like myself to see people that come from the same background and can be able to build up you know, a hype for themselves to the point where you know, they're requested. They're, doing not, they're not doing small shows, they're doing festivals. It's absolutely sick. I don't know how you can't be inspired by that. 
You know what I'm saying? After Section Boys' success, a whole new generation of talented young MCs are trying to leave the streets because they're seeing it's possible to make a proper living off music. The talent coming out of South is serious. One of the newest crews are OJB from Battersea. I spoke to my plug, Score Beezy. So how are you doing? I'm all right, mate. Yeah. How are you? Yeah. yeah, 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 good, good. Where this documentary thing started, really it came about from the fact that like everyone talks about grime, but no one really talks, or they weren't talking about rap. I think a lot of people put rap into a grime category at the moment as well. So everything's um, grime these days, I don't understand. Yeah, and it's not, obviously. Yeah. I mean, can, can we just talk about like what you came up on? I was more listening to American music, to be yeah, honest, yeah, yeah, like yeah. Styles P and that. Yeah. We didn't used to listen to bare English rap, you yeah. know what I mean? I feel like most kids now listen to British music, right? Yeah, all the kids now, it's all they listen to, drill rap. They don't want to hear this American guy. Underground scene's healthy right yeah. now. Obviously, a lot of the people we've been talking to um, have got, like, issues with getting shows locked up. Yeah, that's always gonna that's always gonna happen, man. Especially if you're someone of some sort of you do something out there, people will just look into that and then shh, it's game over. When you say someone, you mean like a I don't know, like, like a shot like a ends. shot or yeah, something. There's somebody yeah, on yeah, the yeah, ends, yeah. Yeah. The way to like almost be big on your ends is to do rap. Is yeah. is to be on YouTube. It's like as the industry's growing, people are seeing improvement. People are seeing people actually make money and a lot more money than people are making on the streets. So it's like, the transformation can happen now. Whereas before, a man said to you, oh, go and do this, you'll get shows, you'll get that. People look at you like, no way. Now there's a market. The scene is looking really healthy at the moment, but it's a make or break year, especially with increased police concern on the criminal past of some of the key players. Will they, A, be able to play enough shows to make a living without them getting shut down, and B, be able to stay out of prison. One rapper who has a lot of heat around him in more ways than one is C Biz, the man responsible for the huge street anthem, The Game's Mine. The shit's a mess, live a C Biz, the game's mine. My table's full, we're eating rice. I came from jail, they said I'm broke. I heard he laughed, they told a joke. I switched the game and fifth the lane. He ate his word, I made him choke. C Biz, the best story. I linked him at his estate in Kilburn in North West. <laughs> Kilburn, a big man. This is where you grew up? Yeah, this yeah. is where we grew up. Need some champagne or something. <laughs> <laughs> Kilburn, this is my bloody skidder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, please though. So we can be vibes in, you know what I mean though? If you look at gigs, yeah. he's like the archetype. Yeah of like rapping out to get out. Yeah, get yeah. out of the hood, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Am I in that situation? Of course I am. But there's nothing different with Jigs' hood yeah. and over here. Yeah, yeah. It's poverty, it's poverty. And, and while we're talking about poverty, should we uh, open the mic? Yeah. Right? Oh shit, is that what they had, yeah? <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> Fuck what them. they had. Jeez. Fuck them, man. Well, yeah, there you go, that's from us to you. I, don't, I try to separate like the, the, the badness from the music, because that's what we're trying to get out of. But we're in a world where like, Provocative music sells, or provoc provocative things is actually more of a hype than trying to be trying to pull pain in it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. When you made the, the Fresh Out tune, the first thing people said is like you were dabbing out of jail and stuff yeah. like that. Fresh show my jail, fresh show my cells. Giuseppe stepping in the court, got me dabbing out of jail. Fez talking about murder, I was chilling with my girl. We, we was laughing, eating pizza, even talking Whoa. on myself. I don't want to be in cuffs, I don't want to no. be in chains. We've all got to be more realistic here with the situation. It's a very like, sensitive situation, topic, and someone's, someone's lost their life. Yeah. Someone's life got taken. I can't come out and celebrate. I never took the person's life, so I can't come out and celebrate and start yeah. saying, yeah, yeah. But I'm trying to say, listen, I was the innocent person, the innocent party. Yeah. So I had to fight my battle as the innocent man. So me coming out and saying, yeah, I dabbed out of jail. I dabbed out of jail because I'm celebrating for me. You're in that position now where they're trying to shut you down, really. Like, I can't think of any other way of saying it. Of course, they're trying to shut us down. That's yeah. it. Are they on your Instagram, the police? Are they? Yeah. Yeah, of course yeah. they are, because when I went caught last, last year, everything they brought us from YouTube, Instagram, yeah. and all social media, you know what I mean? Was it, I mean, it must have got pretty, like, in your head, like, what you were facing. I was facing the top charge, that was it. I was living with people that was doing it. 
the, my next door was the fella who killed the police and ate him. Like the guy downstairs was a murderer, the guy upstairs was a murderer. The so next door killed himself because he couldn't handle it. They found him with what, tea bag stuff down his throat, something around his neck, you know what I mean? People make up ways to kill themselves because 35 years, 40 years, it's not something you want to be doing. Especially when you've got better things to do on the streets from now. But have you got like a strategy now? I know you said you're going to put out a mixtape. Yeah, we've got a strategy. Obviously, like, we come together as like a group. We are the collective. We all kind of get like views and like, we've all got our own fans, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know what sort of music people like, so that's what we make. Seabiz is more popular than ever, but with the seriousness of the crimes he's been linked to, he's clearly going to have the police watching his every move and it seems unlikely that he'll be able to play a live show in the near future. One of the most colourful and maybe unlikely characters in the scene is way out in Essex, but has still built a strong following and respect amongst his peers. Man like pot of paper. Fresh home 15, I was there. I was there. When you could have got a jack for your mobile. A man was on to you cause you're from over there. Growing up I saw enough, she gave me thin hair. I used to ride around my hood doing madness Like if I went Joe, I really didn't care Gee, I just knew that I was in it for the man them And half of them was in Joe, I didn't care And I just wanted in Welcome, welcome, welcome You alright? That's good, my guy? Good to meet you, man Hello, my brother So basically, this is Barking, this is Gascoigne Estate This is where I grew up And I see you've got, uh, you've got two Porsches Two Porsches That's how we're moving This here is the house I grew up in, isn't it? Oh, safe, I was going to ask but That's my primary school right there Yeah from year five, if they piss me off, mum's like, I don't want to be rude. Yeah, I'll come across bad. But I'll just jump over this fence. They never had that big extended fence. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to say they put that there for man, <laughs> but you get me? Before we started filming, we were talking about self-snitching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were laughing and joking. Yeah. But have they ever used rap music in evidence? I don't want to say names, but I'm pretty sure big rappers that are incarcerated now, yeah. they've played their music in trials and look, take it to America. Bobby Schmurda got convicted yeah. of that. If it wasn't solid evidence yet, then it definitely added to yeah. the propaganda yeah, of it yeah, all, yeah, innit? Yeah, Do you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Uh, cool, come and walk over to the man them here, but um, try not to get too much faces, innit? I think it's only that we switch it up. Switch it up. Put these rappers in their place. Show them the levels, bro. Just now I'm never slipping, you're tripping, you think I'm losing. They must have forgot about all this. I've got to say that uh, these seats are pretty comfortable, man. Yeah, this is a company car. Company MOD, car. MOD car, did you get it? Yeah. Can you drive? Yeah, I can drive. I do drive. I'm on a ban and I ain't got a license. So that's scary. Well, I mean, I, I, <laughs> I always tell people I can drive, but I don't have yeah. the necessary paperwork. Yeah, that's exactly my predicament. Killing with success, I've got stress, man, I'm a nuisance. Real life shit, the bag my doggy up in Luton, man, it's lifestyle gruesome. Terrible at twosome, young offenders institution. Why, oh, why? Why, oh, why, oh? So? This is where you recorded both training days. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of my freestyles and stuff. It's where I come to write a bit. Can I ask how you got your name? I used to be like a proper Mowgli street child. Yeah. yeah? Like I won't cut my hair. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I had glasses. Yeah. So like people were just like, yeah, you look like Pa. So like really, I'm just, yeah, I'm just playing with the cars that I've been dealt. For me, it's like just basically get myself across because I don't really look like the type of things that I'm saying or the life that I'm professing, do you know what I'm saying? And you see, like, it's like, you know what someone said to me as well? Now when you get a car, say if you've got a new car, all of a sudden you always see that car on the roads. Since I started rapping and putting videos on YouTube, I always see bare potters on road. <laughs> <laughs> like bare whack kids, a bit chubby with glasses, innit? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's good, man. It's sick, man. You just have to embrace what you are and who you are. Oh, I can't change it, innit? I am who I am. I was the best newcomer by far. Man, I used to ring bells. Now I'm setting off alarms. I won't get off my chest without letting off those arms. Storm before the car, man. I'm the car. So that's pretty much where we're at. But before we finish up, I have to meet up with my guy Corleone. One of the few to start a musical family and bring people through with his GB Collective. He made my favourite street rap record of all time, Poor Little Rich Kid. Just another rich kid, I ain't fucking with no bitch, Nick. Fuck a snitch, Nick. They can get yes, their wigs split. Skinner. You look well. How you doing, bro? You look very well. Yeah. You alright? Nice to see you, bro. Yes. Um, yeah, this is the studio we're in today. I can't stop looking at your watch. 
Can we do can we do a circle of rollies? We do we need like a couple more now. A poor little Ritz <laughs> So GB Records is your thing. Yeah. Where did it start? It started in 2014. Like real guys from the streets opening up a label and making a platform for the youth. Like there's loads of kids out there that are talented and they, they, there's, there's nothing for them to do. Like the major labels don't care about anyone until they got a buzz or anything. So, But a lot of my artists, majority of them are from the, the raw streets and they've got that raw talent. And yeah, that's, that's what we do. Giggs obviously posted up a thing on his Insta about everyone not standing for each other and everyone sort of trying to win together. I would put the work in on music or put the work in on streets, one or the other. It's up to you. You know the ones where you can do both, but just don't fucking talk shit about it and call names and snitch on yourself. Because really, it's sl man of slyly snitches, bro. So let's just tidy it up and get the game back to the way it's supposed to be and let's... Whoever wants to get off the streets, come this way, and whoever doesn't go that way, and let's win. Would you sort of put yourself in the same place? Because you're both similar sort of generation, aren't you? you, you and Gigs? A lot of guys feel like they've got to do bad stuff to kind of get out there, or you know what I mean? It seems to get airplay, isn't it? Yeah. Like, people seem to like the mix-up and the rap beefs and all of that stuff. It's not like it's just music. Yeah. Like, majority of them are, are trying to kill each other. And one of the other main things as well that we keep talking to people about is shows getting locked off. Yeah. Are the police afraid of the artists being violent or are they afraid of the audience being violent? To me, there's like two different things. I just think the police want to shut you down because the content of your music and they don't want niggas on the screen talking about, I'll shoot you and this and that. They're cruel because they know that the guys are actually coming from a bad environment and they're trying to do something like really good and they're actually trying to stop that and push them back to where they're coming from. So I just think that guys have just got to stay positive and push forward. Like, fuck the police. If they're locking your shows, keep trying to do shows. Giggs is a prime example. They've been shutting him down for years, and he's, he's winning now. For a guy from the streets, or a young rapper from the streets with violent content or whatever, like, Giggs is what they want to be like, and I think people should just follow in his footsteps. Like, just keep pursuing what you're trying to do. It's hard, you know. Look at look how his balls are all over my ball. I'm gonna clear up so. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I didn't wanna play no more. <laughs> Kids are like they're in like Essex and they're like banging your shit from their cars and stuff. And obviously, you, you can see that they've, they live a very different life to the one that you grew up with. Are you seeing that a lot? But that's with like a lot of music. Like, sometimes I listen to Rihanna, but I don't, yeah. li I don't live Rihanna's life. No, but you don't listen to heavy metal, do you? Like rock music. There was actually one song, though, I used to play. It was, um, oh, I feel like it goes, man. Let me. Entertain you. Here we go. It's an exclusive. Do, do, do. Robbie Williams. <laughs> that is it. That is it. They are fucking with you in Brixton Hill. So when you did the Vlad thing, did he want to speak to like the greasiest people or something like that? That's one thing I don't really like as well. Though, like, like when when we get we get interviewed, like, I want to talk about the positive stuff, the our goals and stuff. I don't really want to be talking about all that stuff. Like. No, no. That's not really the life we're trying to live. What other mad stuff do you get from social media, like...? Uh, this is one thing I don't like, when people send me stuff to do with drugs and frauds and stuff like that. Like, I get that all the time. Even, I even get some weird girl sending me some dirty nudes, like... Isn't that good? Nah, man. Some girls look mad, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but surely that's, that's why you do it, right? Is to, to get nudes in the DMs. Come on, man. What I do is, for myself, is to get my family out of here. Yeah getting a very good financial stability yeah. and just make more money and build a better community. That's my aims for this. Yeah. It's not because I want to get more girls and all this stuff. I don't care about girls. I think people see you as like pretty wild guys, you know? And actually I think the reality is, is that you know what you're doing. 
Right now, we're still working on ourselves, so I wouldn't even say we're fully established yet. There's still more establishing to do. That's what man's always wanted, to make it big. And we're trying to bring everyone that's around us with it. As youths, yeah, I just always wanted to live with man's brethren and have a yard. Do you know what I mean? It's been like a lot of road man, youths on the roads, dream, aspiration, like. I didn't think it would happen, but man's always thought I want it. Allow war with each other, allow the beefing. If you're gonna make money, do whatever you gotta to do to make your money. It doesn't have to be violent. We're growing up now, you get me? Like, man's mature, man's seen what we could do with ourselves and that. And man's actually trying to do it. So it's been a year since we started filming and things have moved on in a major way. But what's gonna become of these guys over the next year? Who will be the next to go clear? CB's just got signed to an offshoot of Sony Records. Section dropped a new tape and are going from strength to strength. Giggs isn't just allowed to play live now. He's selling out huge shows and he's on two tracks of the latest Drake record. Corleone released a new banger and GB Records continue to champion new and emerging young talent. After filming the documentary, Potter Paper found himself back in jail facing serious charges that could see him serving a long prison sentence. Shortly after that, Skeng, who founded GB Records with Corleone, was murdered outside a barbershop in northwest London. 6-7 finally looked like they have a London show that might actually go ahead tonight at Fabric. This could really be the start of something momentous. Just don't call it road rap, yeah? Yeah. <laughs>